perfect. Everybody, what's going on, and welcome to today's edition of Swag Talk. Of course, this is show we cover the swag inside and out. And I'm your tour guide around the swag. See what else coming at you. And today, man, we're gonna talk a little bit of HBCU quarterback tier list and um, HBCU power rankings from NCAA.com. So um, we're gonna chop it up about those two topics today. Um, y'all make sure y'all hit those socials: uh, Facebook and Swag Talk, Instagram Swag Talk, X, Twitter, whatever you want to call it. Swag Talk 36. Um, also, don't forget to hit the um, hit the like button. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Um, if you have subscribed, um, and you would like to hit that join button, to become a member of the channel, um, and feel free to comment on your thoughts on both of these topics. So we're not gonna gonna waste any time, and we're gonna go ahead and jump directly into this. Um, first, first up on the list is the HBCU quarterback tiers list. Um, as you can see, this list was compiled um, from uh, Kelly Flicks um, on Instagram and Twitter. So make sure y'all go ahead and check them out. Um, they got a lot of good things on on those channels. So make sure y'all hit that hit that up and and, and support them and what they do. Um, I don't have any major problems with this list. I just wanted to share my thoughts on it. Um, I do have a couple additions to put on there and a couple move you know names to move around and. You know, a couple of guys I, I think who may not should be on the list, but I don't have any major problem with this list. This is actually a really solid list. Um, it also shows you that, um, especially on the FCS level, uh, HBCU football, there's not a lot of star power at, at the quarterback position at this point in the season. Um, I know we have a lot of guys who, once the season gets going, will have a lot of guys who I feel like uh, will be on this list. But right now, you know, working with what we're working with coming off of last season, that's not much. Uh, tier one, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, share my 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 thoughts on on these tiers um, after I run through his. Um, tier one is obviously the guy, uh, Davius Richard, uh, North Carolina Central. Um, he's a guy who led the MEAC in in all passing categories, um, 199. Completions, 311 attempts, uh, 25 touchdowns, and 10 interceptions. Completed 64% of his passes, threw the ball for 2,661 yards, with a longer 81 on the season. Also, was a, the third leading rusher in conference um, at 65.7 yards per game. Ran for 788 yards on the season on 130 attempts. Averaged 6.1 yards per carry, which which was second in the MEAC. And 15 touchdowns, which led the conference. So there's nothing you can take away from this guy, man. That there, there's nothing you can, you know, there, there's nothing you can say that, you know, that he just, you know, he he didn't have it or he, you know, he he's not the guy. I mean, right now he is the guy. There's no no arguing with that. I don't I don't I don't see anybody who can make him be anything but number one right now. Uh, moving on to tier two, and like I said, I'm gonna go through his list. And then I'll, I'll 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 make my additions as I get to them. Uh, tier two is uh, Jeremy Musa from Florida A&M. Two hundred twenty-five attempts, three hundred and ninety-three complete. Two hundred twenty-five completions, three hundred and ninety-three attempts. Uh, Twenty-one touchdowns, ten interceptions, twenty-seven hundred and thirty twenty-seven hundred and thirty yards. Completed fifty-seven percent of his passes with a longer sixty-three. Average two hundred and forty-eight yards per game. You know. Uh, in the preseason swag offensive player of the year, that's you know that's something that's up for debate. You know, depending on you know how you look at it. Um, a lot of people feel like he didn't have a great season, and I mean he had he had really good numbers. And I mean, obviously, if Shadur Sanders wasn't in the swag last season, he would have been statistically the top quarterback in the league. Um, he had some up and down games. You know, was you know really bounced around, had multiple 
coordinators in his in his time as a quarter college quarterback. Um, really, this was his first real opportunity, and I thought he made the most of it. You know, I mean, obviously, though know, he can consistency could be something that can that can be attained, but I I, I think he's solidly right now a number a, a tier two guy. You know, a guy who is right there on the cusp. Um, not really the top guy, but you know, really in that mix um, um, for that spot. Um, the, the next guy on 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 his list is Quentin Williams from Howard. Um, this is a guy I've seen on a lot of people's lists at, at a high high level. I'm not quite there yet. I mean, his numbers aren't aren't bad, but um, I'm not quite there yet um, on him. Um, 173 completions, 267 attempts, 64 uh, percent. 64.8 percent completion rate, 16 touchdowns, eight interceptions, 1906 yards along the 54 uh, average, 190.6 yards per game. Not, you know, again, not bad numbers. And honestly, when you look at the quarterbacks on this list, his numbers are are almost at the top of the list. Um, this, this just really shows you that the quarterback play in in this league right now is just not in, in ABC football is not that. Spectacular. I mean, you know, there was only two quarterbacks on this list who threw for over 2,000 yards. So, not, you know, if you're looking at it from a yardage standpoint, it's not a lot there. So, you got a lot of guys in that 1,900 to 1,200 uh, yard range. And, you know, those guys could be hit or miss. Um, I I have, went, have Williams as a tier three guy. And that's only because I feel like I don't really feel like he necessarily, um, just took over a lot of games, and I, I think to be a tier one, a tier two guy, you need to be a guy who, you know, who you you you, you fear going into games. And I don't think you know they had that because they had such a powerful running attack at Howard that I don't think he really had to do a lot. Um, and, and that that kind of makes me still wonder where he was. He was um, number twenty in the MEAC in rushing. Uh, he ran for one hundred seventy two yards, so not really. A guy who carried the ball a lot, so that you know he don't really have that as a as another option. But um, he tier two is not is you know is not egregious. Um, I just feel like he's a tier three guy, so that that's um, that's where I stand on him. Um, again, no 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 real knock on him. I just don't really feel super comfortable uh, with him as, as a tier two guy. Uh, num- next guy on tier two is Andrew Body. Um, from Texas Southern, this is a dual threat guy. Um, finished the season with 141 completions, 259 attempts, 56 56 56 percent completion rate, 1,807 yards, uh, 13 touchdowns, six interceptions, uh, 65 yards was his long, 664.3 yards per game. Passing, finished the lead, finished the season uh, rushing for. 652 yards, averaged 5.6 yards per carry with seven touchdowns. Oh, excuse me. Uh, no, that's, that's, that's a sorry. Excuse me. He finished the season with 576 yards, uh, four touchdowns, 4.6 yards per carry, and 125 carries. Um, and, the, and these numbers, people say he had a bad season. Um, I, don't, I don't think he had a bad season. I, I just don't think they threw the ball um, as much as, he, as they probably could with him. Um, you know, he, he, you know, he was, you know, he, he had, you know, he had one of the top numbers of attempts, but I think they could have threw the ball a bit more. So I think a lot of people look at that and see that, you know, they, they, they think he had a down season. I would still love to see his completion percentage improve a, a bit more, but you know, that comes with being a more experienced guy and he's getting there. This is going to be a third year starting. So you know, he can definitely be a top top caliber guy um, if the offense continues to open up and let him use his arm as much as his leg. Um, so that, he's definitely a solid tier tier two guy. Um, at the end of the season, with a really good season, he could be a tier one guy, um, especially heading into next season. So I don't, you know, again, he's a guy I don't have a problem with being where he is. Um, I don't, and like I said, I don't have a problem with any anybody per se on this list. So. Um, if I move a guy around, it is it's not really a knock um, knock on them. It's more is more of I just feel like they may they may have um, better people who could be at at, at that spot. Uh, moving on to his final uh, 
tier uh tier two guy and that that would be um I, my eyes are all that um Of course, my computer is is acting up. Y'all, give me one second. That'll be uh, Kelvin Durham from Fort Valley State. He's definitely a, a tier two guy. Um, finished the season with um, 147 completions, 242 attempts, 16 touchdowns, four interceptions, 1994 yards. Completed 60 percent of his passes. Um, definitely a really really good quarterback right now. He is the top returning quarterback in the conference. Um, uh, all conference guy, um, definitely could be a guy who could be a, a, a big threat for this for the uh, for, for the Wildcats of Fort Valley, um, and could be the top SIAC quarterback. So I don't really have a problem with with that. Um, I, I think he's a guy who, who deserves to be where he is, um, and I kept him um, on my on my list at that spot. Um, the the next guy um, moving on to. Uh, moving on to tier tier three, uh, this guy I actually put on tier two um, as I work through work through my my technical issues, y'all. I, I apologize. Um, let's, let's get this let's get this straight. And that would be um, Isaiah Freeman from Lincoln, uh, Pennsylvania. Definitely a guy who can who can run the ball. Uh, he finished the season last season with 86 carries for uh, 393 382 yards, average 4.4 yards per carry with four touchdowns. Um, finished the season passing with second in passing, 117 attempt completions, 237 attempts, uh, 13 touchdowns, three interceptions, 1667 yards. He did complete 49% of his passes. If there's anything that, you know, obviously needs to be uh, improved, and I can see if you use that uh, to not have him as a tier two guy, I, I don't have a problem with that. But I, I think his dual threat ability um, and his lack of interceptions um, in nine games it, it is a good a good thing. Obviously, that 49% completion rate definitely needs to be improved. So if that's, you know, if, if that's the one thing that you look at, then I don't have a problem with that. Uh, that could be obviously the difference between being a, two, a tier two and a tier three guy because a tier two guy definitely needs to be a guy who you know who keeps the offense moving in a in a consistent manner. And uh, if you're a 49 percent completion rate guy, then you can stymie your offense. But I, I like his dual threat ability. That's the reason why I put him at at two and move Williams down to three. But if you want to use the completion percentage, then Williams deserves to be in that spot instead. So. That's why I said a lot of these are kind of you know give and take. I don't really have any um, any any uh, plus or minus about these things um, because I I, um, I just think that this is a this this list is so you know sometimes it's so um, sometimes it's just so uh, fluid that you can't you, you can't um, you can't discern different guys. But moving on to tier three. Um, my next guy on the list is another guy that I had, I had at tier three. He uh, he had some injury issues last season, but his overall body of work I think speaks for itself. Um, and that's Traylon Ellis um, from Tennessee State. Um, last season he played he played and started in ten games. He was one fifty three of two seventy nine for eighteen hundred and seven yards with eight touchdowns uh, through the air. He also ran for four touchdowns and fifty five yards on the ground. Um, didn't really have a, a great season. You know, a lot a lot of people felt like he had a kind of up and down season. You know, he got injured off and on throughout the season. But he was a guy who came from Austin P, who was the uh, co-freshman of the year um, in in uh, 2021. So, that, you know, he was a guy who you know, earned second team all OVC, was a sophomore All-American at, at Austin P. And, you know, his body of work, I think, is a – I think he's a body of work guy. Last season his numbers weren't, weren't spectacular, but – um, when you look at his overall body of work, you can see that the potential is there. And, you know, if he's healthy, then his numbers are going to be really good. So I don't have, a, you know, he's a guy who I don't have a problem with being tier three. Um, if he's healthy, he could be a tier two quarterback because he's shown that, you know, he can do it. Um, 
just looking at his numbers in uh, 2021, he threw for 19 touchdowns to lead the OVC. He led the OVC in, in passing yards with 2,625 yards, um, 20, 268 yards of total offense per game, uh, 192 of 254, uh, 67 yards on the ground. Not really a, a, a super runner, but he's a guy who can, who can make things happen. So um, I, I look for him if he's healthy to be a guy who at the end of the season could be a tier three guy. I mean, excuse me, a tier two guy. So I don't have a problem with him being at, at, at three. Um, I feel like he's a guy who is a body of work guy. And that's, that's why I, I put him, uh, I kept him there. Um, if he's healthy, then I would easily bump him up to tier two uh, because his numbers should be really good. Um, the next tier three quarterback we have is Trezon Conley from Prairie View. Um, 100, 122 completions, 208 attempts, 11 touchdowns, 6 interceptions, 58.7% completion rate. Um, Long was 45. So, you know, he played for a team who didn't really throw the ball that much. He had 208 attempts, um, which, you know, for a quarterback who didn't really spend a lot of time with people is not, you know, that, that's that's one of the um, – one of the lowest complete, uh, one of the lowest number of attempts of guys in the conference who didn't necessarily split time with somebody. So they didn't, you know, Kirby didn't really throw the ball that much as a team. So you, you know, you can look at his numbers and, and see why they are as they are. Kirby only attempted 317 passes on the season, so not a lot of passing attempts for the team as a whole. But he was a really, really solid quarterback. Definitely, his strength was on the ground. Um, he finished the season. Um, Number five in rushing with uh, eight, 663 yards on 126 attempts, 5.3 yards per carry and 13 touchdowns with a longer 71 average, 66 yards per carry. So his dual threat ability definitely keeps him on his list. Um, if his passing numbers can improve, then he could be a guy who could be a guy who bumps up, but he's a solid tier three guy mainly because um, his, his, his team doesn't pass the ball that much, so he doesn't get a chance to show – necessarily what he can do um, with his arm. So, you know, because of that, um, you can't really put him too much higher than where he is. Um, now, my my first disagreement, really, with this list um, is, is Miles Crawley. And I don't have anything against Miles Crawley. I think Miles Crawley is going to take the job at Grambling. Um, and I think that he's going to be a really good quarterback. You know, I, I think, you know, he's been waiting for this opportunity to shine. But I just can't put a guy who doesn't have a lot of action. Um, I can't put him here over over guys who have played or, or started, you know, both of that season. Um, his numbers are, you know, his numbers aren't bad. That he played, you know, quite a bit off and on through his time at, at Bama State um, due to injuries to other quarterbacks um, in his time. So I don't have a problem with him as a as a prospect. I just don't necessarily see him as a tier three guy over some other quarterbacks uh, who are in the same position. If you want to look at him like that, um, last season he was 58 of 96 for 785 yards, completed 60 percent of his passes, had four touchdowns and five interceptions. Um, again, not bad numbers, but you know, not necessarily you know, not necessarily great numbers. His best game was against Valley. Uh, he was 16 of 26 for 270 yards with two touchdowns and two interceptions. Um, just, you know, I mean, you know, just not necessarily, just not necessary numbers that would jump off the screen and make you put him as a top, top tier quarterback in the, in, in ACC football yet. Um, this season against Bramlin, it's, it's very possible that he could be that guy. You know what I mean? I, I don't, I don't want to, put all that pressure on a guy to perform on that level um, when I don't know if he's there yet. And that's the only reason why I don't really agree with him being on this list. Um, if I was to put a guy um, at tier three, it would be uh, Tyrell Jackson um, from Johnson C. Smith. That would be my most likely be my guy uh, for that, that second spot um, for that, that, that third tier spot. Um, he was, um, did I lose it? And, I mean, he's obviously the uh, a tier four guy on this list, so I would just bump him up one spot and, and put him there. Um, my tier four quarterbacks, 
Um, I have uh, Corey Fields from South Carolina State. He didn't have a really good season last season. He only played in five games, but he had a but, you know he had a really great season in 2021 uh, when he led uh, South Carolina State to the uh, to the Celebration Bowl. So he's a body of work guy. I don't have you know when you look at his overall body of work, I don't have a problem with you know with him being in that spot um, solely because of his body of work. Um, I, I can, you know, I can see somebody with an argument who says, you know, he, he wasn't that good last season, and I don't have a problem with, you know, with, with somebody disagreeing with him being being right there because he did not play well. Uh, he either was injured or, or, or benched for for a certain portions of the season, so I don't have a problem with you feeling that he may not deserve to be on this list. But his body of work um, from his 2021 season shows what he's capable of um, if he's healthy and he's able to consistently make plays. So I, that's why I kept him on his list. Uh, C.J. Henry from Delaware State was a guy, I didn't feel like his numbers were that good. He barely threw 4,000 yards and he played in like six or seven games. So, I, you know, I don't think he has that body of work to back that up. So I bumped him off. Um, a couple of names that I I would put on tier four um, uh, would be um, one guy I, I would put on there would be uh, – Silas Cruz, um, he went to Livingston, but now he's at Shaw. Um, he threw for 134 t- completions, 253, 263 attempts, completed 51% of his passes, 13 touchdowns. He did have 16 interceptions. So if you want to hold that on him, then I, I don't have a problem with that. Um, 1,474 yards. Um, that's, a, you know, that, that's a guy I will consider putting on that spot. Um, he did transfer to another school, so who knows what he'll do at Shaw. But um, he did have that, um, have that, had some decent numbers. Um, the other guy I would I would consider putting in that spot would be um, now I gotta find his name, uh, Deontay Bono from uh, Albany State. He was seventy three of one thirty nine, had eight touchdowns, four interceptions, with twelve hundred twenty nine yards, completed fifty two percent of his passes, um, and then from the swag. I had a, 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 a three-headed monster that you could pick or choose any one of these guys if that's what you wanted to do. Uh, for various reasons, I can understand why you may not put them on this list, but um, I just wanted to put them here. Uh, Aaron Allen from Alcorn. We, you know, a lot of we don't even necessarily know if he's gonna be the starter this season. You know, um, a lot of people say, "Oh, very how Tyler making with the our fall camp turns out." But Allen was very solid in his four, in, in, in his season. He finished the season fourth in passing yards per game. Um, only playing in eight games, he he had 178 yards per game. Uh, he had a bad stretch um, in the middle of the season where he threw uh, like six interceptions um, and, and got injured. But he was 121 of 194 for 1,424 yards, eight touchdowns, and seven interceptions with 62% completion rate um, before he got injured. Like I said, he had like six interceptions in a, in a three-week span. So he before that, he only had one interception. So he was pretty efficient um, before he hit that mid-season slump, and then he got injured. So um, I still feel like if he, you know, if he's a candidate to start, then he's definitely a candidate for this list um, because he was putting up very solid numbers um, before he got before he got hurt. So I would definitely consider him if he's, you know, if he's gonna be if he's gonna be the guy at all coin this upcoming season. Um, next, I will put I will I will consider Demetrius Davis again, a guy who didn't didn't necessarily light the world on fire. You know, missed time through various games with injuries. Um, you know, didn't necessarily live up to the hype that he came in with. But he was 102 of 171 for 59 percent completion rate, 1287 yards, seven touchdowns, four interceptions, uh, with a long of 67. And I just I, I threw this guy in there because I, I think he can you know I think he can be a, a, a better quarterback. Um, he split time with another quarterback, so his numbers aren't great. Um, obviously his interception numbers could be lower, but uh, that's Xavier Langford. Uh, he was one ten of one ninety eight uh, with six touchdowns, seven interceptions, completed fifty five percent of his passes with twelve hundred and fifty two yards, and he split time with Quincy Casey, who was right behind him uh, in conference play. Um, with almost identical numbers. So, you know, I'm not saying all three of those guys could be on this list. I would say, you know, if you want to put one 
uh, one of them or, or none of them, that would be fine with me. But I just wanted to give some other names, you know, to, to put in some of those spots. You know, because I think a lot of times, you know, when people disagree with this, they don't necessarily say why. Or, or give any other suggestions, and you know these these are not these are not our list. So you know you if you want to make your own list, then you can make your own list, and and, and you know have somebody else you know tear tear your list up. But I you know I didn't want to make this like it was a shot or a, a quote unquote response. I just wanted to talk about it because I thought it was a really solid list. You know it was just a couple names that I, I felt you know I would take off or, or, or put somebody else on in those spots. So. That's 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 the HBCU quarterback tier list. Again, a really good list. I I, I liked it a lot. Um, just had like I said a couple of alterations here and now, but other than that, it was pretty solid. Um, the last thing I want to talk about today is the HBCU uh, 2023 uh, power rankings preseason from NCAA.com. This is they calling it the Road to Atlanta. Um, I'll just go down the list. Uh, number one is North Carolina Central. They are the defending uh, HBCU champs, MEAC champs, Celebration Bowl champs. Um, they are a team who is picked to win the MEAC again, and a lot of people feel like they should be the uh, the, the preseason pick to win the uh, win the Celebration Bowl again. Um, our next team on this list would be um, Florida a and at number two. Um, they are one of the favorites to win the SWAC. A lot, uh, you know, they may be the hands down favorite to win the SWAC, according to some. Um, so they are listed at number two. Number three is Southern. They are the team to pick to win the West. So by virtue of that, I guess you can look at them as the third team on 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 that in that aspect. A lot of questions on Southern. Um, you know, we'll we'll see how that turns out. Howard is number four, uh, runner up in the MEAC last season with Coach Champs in the MEAC last season. Um, finish five and six. Some people think they'll take a bigger step um, and, and make it to the Celebration Bowl. Jackson State um, is a team who has a lot of questions but has a lot of potential on um, their list at number five. So we, you know, we'll see what this team is because this team could be anywhere. They, they lost a lot of guys, but they brought in a lot of guys and they brought in talent. They, you know, brought in a top recruiting class. You know, they, they, you know, they, they did, you know, they did work on the recruiting trail and they're trying to fill those holes in an aggressive manner. So we'll see how this team turns out. But right now they'll pick fifth in this power rankings. Um, they they had these basically set up uh, by by groups. Uh, first group was North Carolina Central. They are called the top dog in this list. Uh, the next tier is called championship sites. That's uh, Florida and them, Southern, Howard, and Jackson State. Uh, number uh, the third tier is the bubbling under tier. These are teams who they feel like are uh, maybe a step away from, you know, being uh, a championship contender. Uh, Alabama State is picked number six on that list. Um, finished six and five last season. Some people think that this team could be a lot better. Offense to me is the question mark uh, for this team. Uh, North Carolina Central is number seven. Uh, they finished. They finished. North Carolina A&T. Excuse me. North Carolina A&T is number seven. They finished seven and four. They're playing in the Coastal. Athletic Association this year instead of the Colonial as it used to be. So they're um, going to um, take a step up and we'll see what they do. Uh, the, the next tier is the sleeper tier. Um, Texas Southern is number eight right there. Um, Alcorn, number nine. Morgan State, number 10. Um, the bounce back tier is number uh, is the next group. Prairie View has that list up at number 11, followed by South Carolina State at number 12. Um, Tennessee State at 13. Uh, to put it together tier is Gramlin at 14, Howard at 15, Alabama a m at 16. And then you have the uncertainty tier to close it out. That's um, Valley at 17, Delaware State at 18, Bethune-Cookman at 19, Norfolk State at 20, and Pine Bluff at 21. So um, that's, that's uh, the tier. That's the power rankings heading into the season. Um, obviously, none of this means anything because, you know, no games have been played. Um, once the, the games start to be played, we'll see. Uh, hopefully, this is a week-by-week -week thing for them. And if it is, I'll keep it updated and I'll see where where things go. So that's going to do it for today's show, man. I'd like to thank you all for tuning in and uh, rocking with us. And we'll be back with another edition of Swag Talk on Wednesday with our Texas Southern preview followed by our UAPB preview on Sunday 
and Sweat Smoke Live on Thursday, 6 p.m. Central, 7 p.m. Eastern. So with that being said, I'm your tour guide around the Swag Well signing out, and we'll catch y'all on the rebound. Peace.